The Shure MV7 podcast microphone is the microphone that I've been using on all of my YouTube videos since I started my channel just over a year ago. So consider this my one year review of the microphone. And to cut a long story short, I've been really happy with it. One of the reasons that I bought this microphone in the first place is it has a feature which uh, not too many other microphones have. There are a couple though, uh, but it has both USB and XLR outputs, which means that you can plug it directly into your computer. And I'll show you how that looks in a moment. But then also you can use it over XLR if you're using an external audio device. So for example, right now I'm plugged in over XLR into the Rodecaster Pro 2. But you can see on the back here, we've got the XLR cable, but then we've also got a USB socket and also a headphone socket for doing in-ear, plugging in your in-ear monitors. But I'll talk about that in a little while. There is one thing that is slightly different uh, that you may notice to the uh, picture on the box or the picture that you may have seen, which is I have actually replaced the windshield. So this is the windshield that comes with it. Uh, and I've replaced it with uh, one that is slightly larger. And it is actually the windshield from the sort of bigger brother, bigger sister of the uh, MV7, the SM7B. Uh, and if I just pop this off for a moment, there you go, just muted it so you didn't get your ears blown off by the noise there. Uh, that is the sort of comparison of the size of them. It does actually fit perfectly. So the key thing here is that the sort of inner diameter here of the foam uh, is exactly the same because the sort of capsule on the microphone is exactly the same on each as well. Now, one of the uh, things that you'll notice about this is, first of all, this feels a little bit denser in terms of the actual foam itself. It feels like a more uh, sort of dense, i.e., you know, smaller gaps between the, uh, the holes in the foam uh, compared to this one. Uh, this one's a lot more sort of squidgy as well <laughs> to use a technical term uh, this one also has a sort of plastic rim uh, around the bottom it's sort of bonded onto that but the key thing is uh, you can see the length so what that means is the end of the foam is just that little bit further off the end of the capsule there and what that means is it helps to stop those plosive sounds the plosive sounds being things the you know the sort of popping sound that you get from peas so if i just pop the original one on for a moment Peter Piper picked a peck of pipple, pickled peppers, if I can get it out right. So there you can see the you're really hearing the, uh, the plosives there on the P sound. But if I just swap it out for a moment. Peter Piper picked a peck of pick pickled peppers. I can't get out in one go. I've got to think of something different to say. But there you go. You can see, um, hopefully, that there is a distinct difference. I'm no audiophile, <laughs> but I can still clearly hear the difference between those two, just even now listening in my uh, my headphones. Those plosives have been definitely reduced by replacing the uh, the windshield there. So um, I'll leave a link to the uh, this windshield. The RK345 is the product number of it from uh, Shure. Um, and then also you'll find a link to the microphone down there in the description as well. So um, the I think this is around about $10 or something like that for the the windshield. So whether or not you think that is a worthwhile investment or not is, uh, is entirely up to you, of course. Um, so as I say, at the moment, it is plugged into the Rodecaster Pro. Uh, and when you are uh, running over XLR, basically, you just have the single cable running out of it. And that's it. There's nothing to do with the setup in the, D, in the, uh, the microphone itself. Incidentally, in the Rodecaster Pro 2, if you are using one of those, um, then you can sort of set different presets for uh, microphones. I'm just using the built-in preset in the Rodecaster Pro 2 for the uh, SM7B. So they don't have a preset for the MV7 as such. I'm using the one for its uh, bigger brother or sister. So that's just a point to note there. That's the settings that I've currently got in the Rodecaster Pro. Now, the... Uh, cables that you get in the box for it as i say it is usb it's actually a micro usb connector on the back of the microphone itself um, but they do give you two separate cables they give you one that uh, goes from micro usb to usb c and one that goes from micro usb to usb a you know the sort of more traditional usb cable now, one thing that I noticed with um, uh, the, the the cable over after about I would say about a year the one that I was using which was the regular usb one um, the actual connector the usb the micro USB connector on the end uh, actually got slightly bent. And that was because of the way that I got it mounted in the arm and just moving it around all the time, you know, constantly uh, readjusting, moving things out of the way, moving it back. Obviously, putting any sort of pressure onto these uh, cables can damage them. And so it did get damaged uh, for me. And at some point, it simply uh, stopped working <laughs> or rather was rather intermittent. So uh, that's just something to note that when you are positioning it, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, you're not putting any undue strain uh, on these. And certainly you don't want any cables where you're kind of bending them, uh, you know, at any point, you know, too much in, in any case for, for any cable that goes for, but particularly make sure there's no strain on here. Uh, fortunately, 
there was a spare one in the box technically because they gave you the USB-C one so I was able to use that but that's just something to note as I say it wasn't the connector though on the microphone itself so it wasn't anything to do with the build quality of that it was literally just the connector uh, so if you do ever have any audio issues with anything <laughs> always first port of call is to check the cables so with that said, what I'll do is I will now just uh, quickly pause and switch over uh, to USB so that you can see how this sounds on USB. So now we are plugged in over USB. So I've basically just unplugged the XLR and I've now got the USB cable plugged into here. And I've also got my in-ear monitors are plugged directly into the microphone as well. Uh, now, once you are plugged in over USB, what you'll notice is uh, it just sort of come to life on the top here. So there is some lights here. There is a touch panel. So this is only something that you're going to use when you are plugged in over USB. Uh, and what this allows you to do is control things like the gain, but also the uh, volume in your uh, headphones as well. Uh, and then also the balance between that as well. So let me just uh, show you how this looks as well if I come over to uh, this view for just one moment. So this is the Short Motive app. This is the app that you're going to use on your computer to basically have some sort of control over the, the audio that you're getting out of your microphone. Let me make sure I'm pointing that the right way <laughs> at my mouth for a change. That might help. Um, so here is the Short Motive app. And there's a couple of things that you can do in here. So if you want to uh, just use some preset levels, uh, you can come into this section that says whoopsie daisy it might have just uh, cut out on me for a moment there uh, it's done a little bit of an adjustment there to the audio volume i think but never mind uh, so what you can do here is uh, you basically can just choose the microphone position so whether you've got it close to you or whether it is further away so obviously this is right next to my mouth more or less so it would be this near one uh, and then also you've got this thing here you can change the tone so we can choose to make the tone uh, dark obviously slightly more deeper uh, the neutral or bright is going to just raise those high levels uh, you've also got the option on here, uh, the live meters. This is these little light strips that you can see around the top. These are used to indicate a number of things. So the first thing is, you know, it, when you are switched over to the, um, the volume setting or the gain setting, it will show you the level of those. But you've also got here live meters uh, and that will then, uh, as I'm talking, you may be able to see that these little LED lights, there's a sort of row of LED lights, uh, and they are acting like a little, you know, sort of scale for you to, a meter <laughs> is the word, uh, for you to uh, sort of see, you know, the uh, the levels that you've got on the microphone. There's also night mode, which uh, basically just dims the lights down slightly. So you can toggle that one on and off for hit from here. Uh, and this is basically the auto settings. Now you also have this uh, monitor mix. This is for the, uh, the, audio that you're hearing in your ears, how much basically you are hearing of your own voice coming back from the mic versus how much is coming out from the system. So if you've got your, uh, you know, any audio coming out from your computer or wherever coming out into this, because this is set as both an input and an output, um, then this is sort of affecting, you know, the sort of balance of that. So if I move this all the way over here, I'm not hearing any of my own voice coming back in, uh, but I'm hearing just only the audio from the system. Whereas if I move it back this way, then I'm hearing a lot more of my self coming back. So that is just uh, how you change uh, that. Uh, you can also mute the mic from in here as well so you can just just like that uh, you can also do this on the microphone itself so there is a little uh, touch symbol here for microphone mute and i can just like that to mute the microphone um, let's have a look at the uh, manual settings though because here you've got a little bit more control uh, you have got the exact same mute button here uh, but then you've got the mic gain so you can turn this up and down that's going to control the uh, gain from the microphone you've got that same monitor mix as well uh, but then we've got a little bit more control over the actual sound that you're getting out of it so first of all we've got the EQ and then there's this one, which is basically a high pass filter. So it's knocking out some of those lower uh, tones. Uh, there's this one, which they call a presence boost, which is boosting up some of the sort of mid to high end. Uh, and then also you've got this one, which is high pass and presence boost, which is uh, doing those two things together, basically. Uh, there's also a limiter that you can turn on. So this is basically going to stop any excessive, <laughs> excessive loud noises coming through. So it does actually put a limit on it. Uh, and then finally, you've got down here the uh, compressor. So so compression is basically, uh, think of it like leveling everything out slightly. So uh, it means that if you're talking loudly, then it will bring those down. But also if, if you're speaking quietly, then it will kind of bring those tones up to kind of level everything out really. So the compressor is off 
if I turn it to light, this is how it sounds, then we've got medium and then also heavy. So that's the difference. And if I just go from heavy compression down to off, you can see what that's doing. It's actually just sort of uh, giving it a bit more of that, <laughs> that radio sound. So whether you actually want all of these things on or off, uh, you know, turning everything up to the max is not always the way to go. Uh, but that is just the level of control you've got over it. Whereas with that manual, it's basically you're just choosing whether it's near or far and you've got those three kind of presets. And then once again, you've got the live meters and night mode toggles on here as well. Um, the other thing though that you've got is you have got control over this on the device itself. So on this side, we have got the little mute button, uh, the touch screen mute. Uh, and then on this side, we've got uh, one that has a picture of uh, both a microphone and then also headphones. And this does two things. If I tap it once, uh, so I can see it. Now it's turned orange, which is for he headphones. And uh, now basically I'm controlling the volume in my, uh, my headphones. Uh, if I press it again to switch over to the mic, uh, then now what I'm controlling is the gain. So I can turn that up and down to control the, uh, the gain. Uh, and then if I press and hold, press and hold, he says. <laughs> uh, then what I'm doing is I'm controlling the monitor mix. So that is the uh, the monitor mix that we've got over here. So you can control all of this that you're seeing in the app. Really, I rarely open the app once I've got the things set up as I had them. Uh, then uh, you, once I've got that set up, then I just do any sort of control from here, or in fact, more likely from the computer. Um, so that is the sort of difference in sound that you can get between it on USB versus XLR. And yeah, overall, apart from that one minor thing about the uh, the cable having that slight issue, which was probably, as I say, more down to uh, user error than uh, certainly the not the manufacturing of the device. The device itself is really solid, really hard wearing. I've not had any difficulty with uh, with that or any issues with you know, with build quality or anything like that. So overall, I would say it is uh, a really a really solid device. And certainly, if you're just starting out on a YouTube channel and you want that versatility of being able to use it on USB and XLR, uh, I. I can highly recommend it. Now, if you are thinking of using it with a Rocaster Pro 2, you may be interested in some Rocaster Pro 2 videos, which are coming right up just over there on the right hand side. So I'll see you in there.